Welcome to the West Ham Voice. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday afternoon. It's beautiful, it's bright, it's sunny, it's lovely out there. And as soon as I finish this video, I'm out there to uh, enjoy what's left of it. So whilst the um, uh, the transfer window is all about Declan Rice and uh, the protracted move to either Arsenal, Man City, Man United or whoever else is coming in for him, there are other things that are happening at West Ham, of course, and uh, they're kind of they're happening almost like as if they're happening in the background because all eyes are, of course, on the uh, whole Declan Rice issue. So what's been intriguing is with Mark Ward Warburton's departure is not that he's left West Ham, but he's uh, left West Ham, um, the third coach in as many years that's departed following in the footsteps, of course, of Alan Irvin, Stuart Pearce before him. Uh, but the intrigue is that Warburton has decided to detail why he has departed. With Warburton's frank account of his departure, I wonder how that bodes for the incoming technical director, Stim, uh, Tim Steiton. Now, before you all remind me that Warburton is uh, a first-team coach and uh, Steiton is a technical director, let me try and explain to you uh, why I think there's perhaps a slight significance because both roles are there to help the manager and where necessary and appropriate to influence the manager in his thinking and decision making. So if first team coach uh, Warburton was unable to influence David Moyes with his tactical appro approach on the pitch, is Steiton going to walk into a situation where he might be unable to influence David Moyes in what happens off the pitch? Now, I say we can only assume that Warburton was unable to influence Moyes because of how his interview went with Sky Sports. But before I look into what Warburton said, let's cast our minds back to when uh, Irving left. Now, if you recall, uh, Irving cited that he didn't want to commute daily uh, uh, anymore and that the coaching role was taking its toll. Um, uh, uh, Irving lived up north or lives up north uh, and he didn't want to keep commuting to London, uh, which impacted on his, on his livelihood. Now, many of us believed that and uh, we kind of took it at face value and didn't really question it too much. But then, of course, the following summer, last summer, the, f the same thing happened with Stuart Pearce. He also departed and talked about he didn't want to work full time. He wanted to focus his attention on punditry, kind of wanted to take it easy uh, now that he turned 60. Uh, and people again, I think this time round, people did question uh, what was going on. Many fans speculated that both coaches left more because of David Moyes than any other reason. Now, to their credit, both Irvin and um, uh, Pierce. Uh, kind of um, didn't say much. They kept their decorum. They didn't say anything untoward in the press against David Moyes. In fact, if anything, um, Pierce would go out of his way to praise David Moyes whenever he was doing any pundit work on Talk Sport. But again, for the third summer in a row, this summer, we lose a first team coach again, or more precisely, we lose our third number two to David Moyes. And fans are, of course, questioning why. Now, Despite the fact that uh, Warburton was uh, a defender in his uh, playing days, uh, much was said about him coming to West Ham United to help with our possession style attacking side of our play. He was also brought in to scout our opposition and to provide detail as to how we could set ourselves up to counter what the opposition would bring. In Warburton's career... As a manager, he was renowned for creating an attack-minded team, uh, especially at QPR, when he created an exciting team that included the likes of uh, Eberechi Eze, uh, as well as uh, Bright Osai, Osai Samuel and Ilias Kerr. And that led to the Hoops uh, having three solid mid-table finishes in the championship, with Eze since moving on to Crystal Palace and even being called up to the England squad. Now, however, if he was developing our possession style attacking play, it wasn't it didn't seem to be quite evident in the way we were approaching our games in the Premier League last season. And many fans started to question Warburton's worth and whether he was actually contributing anything at all to the first team. Now, uh, then after announcing his departure, Warburton was interviewed by Sky Sports. And this interview came out on Saturday in which Warburton came out with one or two revelations maybe 
Um, now, the first thing that Warburton said was that uh, had he not left West Ham United, his, his friendship with uh, David Moyes might have been in danger. The two go back a long way. And he qualifies this by stating that both he and Moyes have different philosophies on the game. And he admitted to challenging the Scots throughout, uh, throughout the season on several occasions. He said, the challenging bit for me was I've been managing for so long and you're the decision maker. Not in an arrogant way. I don't mean it at all in an arrogant fashion. Just the fact that when you're used to that process and then suddenly you're not. I think David and I have different philosophies on the game, which is part of the reason why he wanted me to come in to West Ham in the first place. But I think I just found that really challenging. And the most important thing to me was friendship in that. And I think our friendship would have been in danger if we'd just carried on uh, with me challenging certain things. He went on to say, so we left in a very amicable way. We had a good conversation and they and the club looked after me and anything I can do to help David and help the club, I always do. So that's really quite interesting. Warburton has admitted that he's had differences of opinion with David Moyes. Warburton has admitted that he's challenged David Moyes throughout the season. During last uh, season, we kind of heard uh, the rumours that uh, Moyes had been falling out with some of his coaching staff and that he wasn't taking into account what his coaches were suggesting. And Warburton's interview seemed to affirm this. Now, if the manager wasn't taking into account what the number two was suggesting, then what chance did any of the other coaches have? But there's always two sides to every, every story, because what we also have heard since uh, since the season has ended is that we did try a different approach on the pitch. We tried and it didn't work. If you recall uh, what uh, Antonio said in his podcast appearance, Antonio alluded to the fact that we went on to try different things. We tried a different type of system uh, and then that wasn't working. So we ended up reverting to type in our counter-attacking uh, system. Could it be that this is where Warburton and Moyes stopped seeing eye to eye on tactics? If anything, who was right? For example, when we were apparently playing the possession style football, our results weren't going very well at all. Uh, and then when we reverted back to our counter-attacking counter -attack, ways, one could argue that our results started to improve. Ironically, it's results that matter. And one would have to suggest that perhaps David Moyes was vindicated because when we went back to our counter-attacking football, the, the results started to improve. But what of what of Warburton's role also as a scout uh, on, on our opposition? We were on the receiving end of many disastrous results right through last season. Now, I dare say Warburton might return into management. I'm pretty sure he will. Perhaps probably another championship team. And his philosophy on how the game should be played will prove to be effective once again. So Warburton has gone into his final year at the club. Uh, uh, so Warburton uh, has gone into the final year of the club. David Moyes seeking. So sorry. So now that Warburton has gone, David Moyes is going into the final year of his uh, of his contract at the club, seeking his fourth number two in as many years. Now that takes us on to uh, what happens with uh, Tim Stiton. Uh, the, imm the imminent arrival uh, of this um, of this person as a technical director, apparently it's going to be announced, I, I don't know, probably on Monday, uh, if not sooner, or, or at least sometime next week. First of all, what would a technical director be responsible for and who at the club uh, would this role typically report to? It's often assumed uh, that um, a, a role like this will report to the board. <clears throat> in reality, every chairman and every chief exec interpret this role differently, tailoring it to the structure, the styles, and the needs of the team itself. In today's game, a technical director may be tasked with a number of duties, including responsibility for and the overseeing of the club's playing philosophy, of course, the academy, the training ground, player contracts, and the recruitment of players and coaches. This is one reason why, when it was announced that we will be bringing in such a role, many fans questioned what would it affect? Would it affect Mark Noble's role, and would it affect uh, Rob Newman's role? Well, we don't yet know what remit Stiton will have at West Ham United. There are assurances that he'll work alongside Mark Noble, so that Noble can learn the ropes from someone who has been involved in this side of the footballing business for a number of years. But not too much has been said about Newman's role, and it could mean 
that uh, Newman would be replaced. Now, one of the um, uh, directors, uh, technical directors in the Premier League, uh, Dan Ashworth, who was who went up Brighton, he helped to transform the team. He he was backed with a new stadium, state of the art training. Despite being on a limited budget, he helped to create an exciting and attractive football team to watch. And as we have seen at Brighton, there's a continuity in the footballing philosophy uh, at the club, despite who coaches them. Ashworth uh, has since moved on to uh, New, uh, Newcastle United uh, as a scouting director. Uh, but when he was at Brighton, he would oversee the men's and women's first teams. He'd oversee player recruitment, the academy, the medical and the sports science departments, and also player and loans. As Ashworth said, it's, I stand in the middle of a wheel and my job is to bring all these to, uh, departments together, connecting the spokes. When um, Ashworth was uh, director, technical director at the FA, he wrote and he delivered a course about the technical director role. He said, the principle for a technical director, in my opinion, is to look at the medium to long term interests of the football club. It's not about the short term. It's not about getting a result tomorrow. It's to try and make sure our club is set up in a way that other, uh, the other departments supplement. Will the board allow Steiden uh, the same license at West Ham United? Uh, and, uh, um, you know, will they allow him time to help shape the club for the medium and long term? We know Moyes is in the last year of his contract. And this, for once, is probably good planning from the club. Bring in Steiton now and uh, work alongside Moyes for the next year. And then perhaps uh, keep, St well, hopefully keep Steiton so he could continue to help shape uh, how the club should operate. So who will Steiton report to? Well, by that description that I've given you, it makes perfect sense that Steiton will re be reporting to the board. And if anything, in reality, Moyes should be reporting to Steiton as well. But I think that's one compromise that Steiton will have to make. Uh, that Moyes will continue to report to the board as well as Steiton will. So how's this all going to work? Steiton's no mug. As Gio said in the show that we did last Wednesday, Steiton must have been offered a fantastic vision of West Ham because we are not the first club who have been eager to acquire his services since he left Bayer Leverkusen back in March. Spurs, Chelsea and Liverpool are all rumoured to have shown an interest in him. And of course, at a club like Chelsea, he would have virtually unlimited funds to help shape the club and its playing staff. So what is it that has attracted Steiden to uh, West Ham United? Well, playing in Europe for a third season in a row will surely have helped. Having a nucleus of a very good squad despite the fact that one or two players like uh, Rice is, big, is leaving, uh, will also be an asset, something that he can build on. The club will spend money in the transfer market, despite what people think. And our academy is also looking very strong at the moment too. But what can Steiden bring to the table? He spent most of his footballing career in Germany. Uh, after a brief spell with Werder Bremen reserve team, he moved to Seattle in 2000. But in 2004, he came back as a defensive midfielder uh, to Germany, first at SV Meppen, and then finishing his playing career in 2009 with lower league outfit F F F F FFL Oldenburg. When his playing career ended, he moved to several roles, first at Werder Bremen as a youth scout, head of youth scouting, head of scouting, culminating him in being director of football before moving on to Bayer Leverkusen in 2019, where he spent his first three years as head of scouting and then sports coordinator. He's known for his meticulous and sophisticated approach, uh, uh, who embraces a data-led approach uh, on player recruitment. In his time at uh, both Werder Bremen and Leverkusen, he helped to acquire players such as centre-back Edmund Taps, Taps Boza, Taps Oba, uh, bought for around £17 million and now worth about £30 million. Musa Diaby, who he picked up from PSG at a reasonable £13 million and now he's worth about £45 to £50 million. Czech Republic striker Patrick Schick, who despite making a big money move to Roma, uh, just two years later moved to Leverkusen for £23 million. Right back, Jeremy Frimpong, who moved from Celtic in a £9 million deal, and he's now worth about £35 million. And most recently, attacking winger Amin Asli from Toulouse for only £5 million, who's now worth about £20 million. 
At Werder Bremen, he was also impressive with his signings, such as Serge Gnabry, who was at Arsenal, and one and only Kevin De Bruyne, who went on loan from Chelsea. But perhaps uh, um, uh, his biggest finding or his biggest signing uh, was probably Xabi Alonso, who went to Leverkusen as head coach. And with Alonso having just one year left on his contract, which expires at the end of this forthcoming season, there are already rumours that uh, if uh, Steiton comes to West Ham United, who could follow him? But Alonso himself. But to be honest, maybe Alonso's got his eye on bigger fish, where apparently he's already been rumoured to become uh, to become the third, the next choice uh, for Real Madrid as head coach. So not only does Steiton uh, bring uh, um, his, his talent with helping improve the squad, but his long term project could also be to help look for a replacement for David Moyes and and where we might finally move from a manager situation to a head coach role. But how will it work under Moyes for the next year? I think Moyes knows that despite the cup success that, that uh, he has brought, he's unlikely to bring uh, to be offered a new contract at West Ham United. David Moyes, uh, he knows, uh, will all, he'll be aware that West Ham are serious about finally looking to move into a different direction. And ironically, even Moyes himself buys into this philosophy of, of planning forward. So he will understand, he will be the first to understand that West Ham's approach, Moyes may be a stubborn and proud man, but uh, he still stands up for his values and his approach. But he's not a stupid man. I doubt very much he'll bring any resistance to the appointment of Steiton. In fact, it's been suggesting, suggested that he's already agreed this with the board. I'm sure that Moyes and Steiton will have had or will be having discussions as to what's needed to strengthen the squad. Uh, for the forthcoming season, which areas are more important and that the two will find su suitable players to do just that. So what's in it for Steiton? Why would he not prefer to go to a bigger Premier League club who have already courted him? Well, I think Steiton will view West Ham United as a perfect stepping stone in his career. He'll relish helping to shape a club like West Ham from, from being a perennial mid-table a fighting relegation team to one who is constantly looking to finish in the top half or at least the top six in the league. Going to a club like West Ham United would help to uh, Steiton to cut his teeth in the Premier League rather than going in at the deep end at a bigger club like Chelsea or Liverpool. Succeed here and the world will truly be his oyster for any club that comes in for him and this league or any other league in the future. Thank you for watching. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed the show. Do leave uh, uh, any any uh, comments that you like. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe and like button and the bell notification to let you know when I'm next on. And I'll see you on the West Ham Weekly on Monday Night Live. Uh, well, on Monday night.